At this point, I've switched to so many reusable items over the years that makeup pads barely even registered as a change when I made the switch a few years ago. I've done a few videos now on cloth nappies and cloth pads talking about their pros and cons, and there are pros and cons. It's not going to work for everybody, but now seems like an appropriate time to also do a video all about makeup wipes, their pros and cons, and see if that's something that you would want to make the switch to as well. These are the wipes I have. I have two sets, one which was made for me by my sister and one which was bought on Amazon. Out of the two, I really don't like the one I bought from Amazon and I've slowly been using them for other things like cleaning up little bits and pieces around the house just because I don't use them for my face. I don't like the size, they're too small for me. One side stretches more than the other, so you end up with this lopsided thing over time. And I don't like the feel of this pad in particular, it feels completely synthetic and while bamboo isn't going to be completely natural, it it doesn't feel as nice as hemp or cotton or anything like that so I really don't like them or use them. Since my favourite ones were made for me I can't list the exact ones but there are lots of beautiful handmade makeup remover pads on Etsy which is a goldmine for this kind of thing so if you want something which is handcrafted and has a pretty pattern on it or just a little bit of variety you're going to find the nice ones on Etsy. Whichever brand you go for, using them is the same as a cotton pad. You just douse it with makeup remover, gently remove the makeup, but instead of throwing it away after, you just throw it in the washing machine and then use it again. I especially like them because I can fold the edges and that way I can get between my lashes a lot better than I could with a cotton pad. Well, I couldn't with a cotton pad before and it means I have to use less cotton buds to clean off my eyeliner afterwards, which is fine by me. As for how well they clean, that all depends on how much time you want to spend keeping them spotless. If you regularly use a vanish bar after each use, scrub them under the tap a few times before they go into the wash and then sun bleach them regularly, they'll stay a lot whiter. Otherwise over time they are going to go more of a pale grey than a brilliant white. And if that's something you don't like the look of aesthetically, then cloth wipes aren't going to work for you. One of the things you could do instead of just going for something which is plain white is go for something that has a pattern and then the stains are nowhere near as noticeable. You can dry them in the dryer if you have one, they come out fluffier if you do this, but normally I just let them dry on the washing line or by the stove and they still feel lovely and soft after each use. Despite how they can stain and don't stay looking immaculate, I massively prefer them just because I know I'm never going to run out and I don't have to rely on getting some from the shops. There's also the money saving aspect and fine cotton pads don't cost much, but if I could reuse something, I'll happily reuse it and put that money somewhere else. I also find that they're just a little bit more thorough at getting the makeup off my skin. Cotton pads for me are just a little bit too soft and these get the foundation off so much better. They're a switch that was so easy to make, I love them, I haven't gone back to cotton pads since. And if you try them, maybe you'll like them too. One of the questions I'm sure I'm going to get is, Claire, how do you make these? Well, I mostly sew by hand because I have an ongoing dispute with my sewing machine. So for this video, I thought I would link a fantastic video by Daisy Nix. It covers the entire process, how to make them in detail. So if that's something you want to watch, the link is in the description box. And as usual, if you like my videos and want to see more content, feel free to follow me on the mailing list. Do not subscribe to me on YouTube. That way you get everything sent directly to your email and I'll have a new video for you soon.